Please join me in welcoming Alex Ball, Section G, who will introduce our student speaker, Jackie Sandberg. Good afternoon. My name is Alex Ball. I'm a proud member of Section G. And I have the pleasure of introducing our class day student speaker, Jackie Sandberg. Jackie was selected by our peers through a competition in which over 30 contestants presented their speeches to a panel of judges, including a representative from each section. The speeches addressed many of the themes upon which we will reflect today. Gratitude, ambition, responsibility, humility, relationships, and everything that is required for us to fulfill the school's vision that we become leaders who will make a difference in the world. Many of the speeches were truly phenomenal, but Jackie won as she managed to, in one 10-minute speech, make the judges laugh, cry, and feel inspired in a way that we thought would hit the tone of this day just right. Jackie grew up in Miami, Florida, attended the University of Virginia, and like the prototypical HBS student, had accomplished a lot before business school. She graduated as one of UVA's two endowment scholars, was offered a Fulbright scholarship, and after a few years working in publishing, founded her own new publication. And while she assured me her house bore zero resemblance to John Belushi's An Animal House, voted sorority president of the year, she was clearly as fun as she was talented. Jackie continued her accomplishments here at HBS, where she was a writer for our school paper, The Harvest, and the head writer of the campus comedy, The HBS Show. But outside of being accomplished, there is nothing prototypical about Jackie Sandberg. Superficially, her path has certainly not been the HBS norm. She didn't major in business or economics, but rather in things clearly more practical, art history, art history and neuroscience. <laughs> she didn't work in investment banking or consulting, but rather in publishing, and she didn't aspire to be the next private equity titan or Silicon Valley entrepreneur, but rather a comedy writer and future Tina Fey. But the real reason Jackie stands out on campus is her uniquely engaging wit, genuine authenticity, unabashed candor, and the big smile, big laugh, and big personality with which she enlivens every scene. These make her such a well-known and well-liked presence on campus that even the postmaster quickly heard about the girl who is ironically famous both for being voted our class's most eligible bachelorette and for going full character and breaking her foot while dressed as the Jersey Shore Snooky at the HBS Halloween party. <laughs> Jackie is a friend to many of us, has entertained most of us, and today I believe will give a speech that is inspirational for all of us. Please join me in welcoming Jackie Sandberg. So thanks, Alex, for that really good-looking introduction. I, br I brought my sexy voice for you. So hi, thanks for having me. It's an honor to be here. Um, just to clarify any confusion, no, I'm not HBS executive education student and Victoria's Secret runway model Tyra Banks. I get that a lot. I'm Jackie Sandberg, Section C. C-section. And Sandberg, um, not, not related to famous HBS alum and current COO of Facebook, Cheryl Sandberg, at least not according to the restraining order. <laughs> Thanks for having me anyway. We've come a long way over, la over the past two years. I have a lot to be thankful for and a lot to be proud of. I think EC curriculum chair, or MBA curriculum chair, Young Me Moon, encapsulated this well in an email students received in November of this year entitled, On Giving Thanks. Her marching orders to us were, I'm quoting here, don't let the weekend go by without using one of those magical phrases like, I'm so grateful you're in my life, or I couldn't be doing this without you. Find the person you need to say these things to and say them, just say them. Got the hint? So here goes. I'm so grateful you're in my life, young me moon. 
I couldn't be doing this without you, young me moon. <laughs> and we couldn't be doing this without the countless faculty and staff who have contributed to transforming the student body. I know the dining hall staff alone has truly transformed this student's body. <laughs> Thanks for that. But of course, we'd be remiss not to thank the family and friends who have brought us here and supported us along our way. If we don't say it enough, please know that you are loved and appreciated today and every day. So on, on behalf of the class of 2011, thank you. And this day is as much yours as it is ours. Nice. <laughs> no, 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 okay. Today is also a time to reflect on the expectations of us going forward as graduates of the Harvard Business School. Expectations that perhaps aren't as clear as they, might, they once might have been for us in the past. I'm sure for a lot of us weirdo overachievers, growing up, there's a huge focus and expectation on uh, grades and studies and GPAs and SAT scores. Then college rolled around and expectations got a little more complicated. I remember uh, my parents dropped me off at UVA, my first year dorm, and as they were leaving, uh, my dad, sitting right there, which doesn't make me nervous, hugged me tightly, and he said with all the gravitas, a man who still listens to ABBA <laughs> can muster, he said, Jackie, do good. Hugging him back, I remember thinking, pretty sure he means do well. <laughs> and before you know it, college is over, and we're working hard in the real world. And I'm working in New York when D. Leopold, the dean of admissions, calls my cell phone. She can be so needy. <laughs> Seriously. So she calls to tell me I've been admitted into the class of 2011. And as soon as I crawled out of that office supplies closet from where I could take a personal call while at work, I couldn't wait to tell my family. My mom cried, my dad cried, my little brother Dan in the background kept going ka-ching, ka-ching. <laughs> and flash forward, and we're all here, new students, and we're starting at HBS. And every single person you have ever met has been informed by you that you're starting at HBS. <laughs> and we're meeting new friends, like Tom, Finn, Mr. Ting, Marky Ting. Deepak Malhotra made me put that joke in. He wrote the book Negotiation Genius. You are good at what you do, sir. <laughs> anyway, just kidding. I love puns. That was hilarious. So we're here, new students, and we're just excited to learn from these all-star professors like Francis Fry, Clayton Christensen, and Nit Noria, just hoping that, a, that an alliterative name is not a prerequisite for success here. I was not going to change my name to Saki Sandberg. <laughs> Just kidding, I would have. But what were the expectations of us as new students? What was achievement and, su and success here? Together, we fumbled our way through learning what it means to be a student at the Harvard Business School. We learned to listen. Dramatic pause. We learned to cooperate. We learned to focus on value creation and value addition rather than just value claiming. While here, we crystallized our concept of leadership. We became acclimated to applauding frequently. We learned how to throw costume, oh. <laughs> so literal. We learned how to throw costume parties frequently. We learned how to be insincerely bashful about saying that we go to Harvard. Um, the school in Boston, or really Cambridge. I hate to drop the H-bomb. <laughs> Once here, our class succeeded in a myriad of ways. 
be it launching tech ventures, starting new businesses, running business conferences, getting involved in cultural shows, or performing in the HBS show, which was particularly well written. <laughs> By traditional metrics, we did well. But Harvard challenged us to do more than well. We've been challenged to be the leaders who will make a difference in the world. We've been challenged to do good. And I think it's by spreading the good that we collectively meet this expectation for us to make a difference in the world. And there's some pretty painless ways we can start. We can try to do good by the people we care about, by letting them know that they're the people we care about. And by surrounding yourself with the right sorts of people, people who will enable and encourage both your success and your wellness. And we can try and do good by reorienting ourselves, by looking outward and avoiding individualistic and narrow-minded priorities. We do good for ourselves by not just thinking, what will I do with my one wild and precious life? But rather, how can I help improve and add value to other people's lives? And I know this all sounds like easier said than done, and that's fair. And spoiler alert, we will fail in this endeavor. We'll lose money, we'll lose jobs, we'll let loved ones down. And it's funny because some of my most vivid memories are of those instances of failure and of redemption. I mean, operations class for me was an epic battle, <laughs> Professor Kaufman. <laughs> and with, in class with phrases like, take arms against the tyranny of incrementalism and never manage from the ivory tower, you'd think my ops professor made his lesson plans while watching The Lord of the Rings. <laughs> but Professor Kaufman invested in my learning and made this subject come alive. And through patience and virtue, he helped me to learn operations. I mean, I do acknowledge that this might be because I slightly resemble a hobbit. <laughs> and more, more meaningfully and personally for me, in one of my more vivid failures, I failed my, uh, my, I failed my wonderful sister Louise in 2008, when the doctors at Dana-Farber told us it was time to take her home to Miami, we took what would be our last plane ride together, sitting side by side. And, um, and she asked me to read to her. And, uh, and I didn't do it. Instead, I was um, busy like writing in my journal, my thoughts my observations, so I wouldn't forget a thing. And it was, it was inconsiderate. Um, it was an individualistic decision. It is my single greatest regret in life. And it will be an albatross I carry forever. And that's okay. We will do good, and sometimes we'll fall short. We'll all make mistakes, both professional and personal. But the point is to learn, to recalibrate and think, what kind of person, not just business person, do I want to be in this world? And no, I don't think it's presumptuous or prescriptive to give this much advice. I have wisdom, people. I'm in my 20s. <laughs> Pretty sure I know all there is to know about life. I will say, though, that in my limited experience, it's really the good that matters more than the well. It's the good that you remember. So our task in this auspicious time is to figure out how are you going to do good today? How will you do good for the rest of your life? As Dexter Gate and Harvard Yard reads, 
You have come here to grow in wisdom. As we leave, Harvard will never be far. Indeed, you'll be tethered to the school, paying for that wisdom. Every month, for the next 780 months, I've counted. And should you miss the academics, just grab your closest romance novel. If there is someone looking out of a window, pensive, staring at the rain-soaked road ahead, wondering what went wrong, you'll instantly be transported to your time here as a student, reading the first paragraph of any given case. <laughs> so, like that one, Stephen, huh? <laughs> so in our final moments as students, amid the celebration and the rush to make doctor's appointments while still on Harvard's health insurance, <laughs> let us remember, being a graduate of the Harvard Business School, you're expected to succeed to fulfill a legacy of excellence. You're expected to do well, but perhaps dad got it right, not about liking ABBA. You're expected to do well, but it is my hope that we all do good. So thank you and congratulations to the class 2011. May we each do well and may we each do good.